Ari. Uh, it's great to see the cymatic audio. Uh, would you say cymatic or chymatic? Cymatic. Cymatic. From the Greek, cyma, wave. Ah, okay. That's where, hey, it has a deep background. So, um, your product range has expanded hugely since the last I saw. I think the last time I saw something, it were these guys, which were the Back. standalone recorder and playback units. Yes. So, what's going on here? There's a lot more network, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, we're very back into the networking. We committed ourselves a couple of years back into open standards, basically the AES 67 standard that's now officially ratified since 2013. And based on that, we went two directions. First of course, is, of course is the recording and the playback. That we have expanded from the 16 channels that you just saw into 24 channels. And the newest thing here is that we now also put the player and the recorder into a networking, meaning that these guys are not connected by word clock or any external connections. They are just hooked into a standard network. And guess what? When I press the play button, they all come along. So, right. uh, these guys are 24 track playback recorder rack kind of things. Times four. So that's 96 channel. And the only thing connecting these guys is a network cable. And we go much further than just sync because if you will zoom into the master, you will see we have here a song and it's preloading this song and that's all cool. But now I'm going to change the song to a different one and we will see that now the slaves understand that something has changed. I push the button and there we go. Wow. And so we're not only syncing towards the clock, we also exchange song information, ex uh, directory information through the network. And that's that's I mean, these, these are the kind of things that are used for uh, big tours, for playback of certain things, or indeed recording direct from well, Interestingly enough, we have now four world tours on the road. Major names that I, of course, cannot name, but really major guys who do hundreds of shows where they really want to push the button and know that from Milan to Helsinki, the show will start when they want to. But the setups are not that different for any bigger top 40 show or even the guys who do the regular uh, uh, the weddings. It's always the same thing. You have a good musician, he plays his good parts, but then there's a lot of stuff, backing vocals, that you want to bring along. That's where our stuff comes in. And while we are trying to hit certain price points, we make it available to even the smaller guys. So they synchronize. Are they able to kind of jam sync so that if you want to vary very timings and maybe uh, cut things, or is it a linear kind of synchronization? This is a linear kind of sync. Because when you go in playback, you do all your preparations beforehand in your Pro Tools, whatever environment. And when you are done and you have printed that to a USB stick, you want it to be reproduced exactly as it is. And that's exactly what's happening here. Yeah. So also I noticed that uh, we've got some sort of network attached audio yeah. interface stuff going on here. So this is our M42, that are four high-end mic preamps. It also has two line outputs, and of course it has MIDI, all connected to a standard network cable. When you look in the back here, you will also see that everything we do here is connected through a very standard Netgear switch. Nothing fancy, nothing special, something that you can find in any store. Then we have connected basically one of the U-Tracks here and take the analog output into the analog input, into the machine, and it comes out here. This is where we connected the Genelec speakers. And if I now turn up the right knob, you will see that we're now basically sending it through the network to the speakers. So that's a predefined, predetermined mix from the output of the U-Track. Yes. That is all not that special because other guys can do that. The only thing special here is is that we are basing it on AES 67 open standard and the guys who have might have read up on AES 67 says hey but AES 67 is like the RTF format of audio meaning I can exchange content but I may not exchange all the parameters of mixing and routing and so on. So for that reason Built on the open standard of AES, we have built up an additional layer of our own software. We call that AudioLAN. And within AudioLAN, I can do routing. In this particular case, we do not route channels, but we route basically 
devices. Right. So, for instance, I want to route my in-ear guy, my in-ear monitors to the uh, auxiliaries of my mixer. I would go to a certain page, let's say that's this, and it will show me exactly the inputs and outputs of these two units, we disregard the rest. If I would go into a larger setup, here, this is for instance my mixer, here I can connect certain channels to certain in and outputs. Or, if I wanted to, I could even take everything and bring it over like this. Right, so in like a... And, and the, these devices, they announce themselves on the network, so they say, I'm here, these are the... These I'm here, I'm there. And the cool thing here is, this is proprietary, this is us. Right. But we're big on open, because we believe open technology, that's the future. So, we go from a proprietary level with one long click, and guess what? There is my AES67 webpage, which is available for anybody on the network. Be it Dante, be it Ravenna, be it Qlan, anybody can connect here. And where's that hosted? Is that hosted in the software or in, embedded in your device? It's embedded in the device. It's right here. So as soon as I type in the IP address of this unit, it will open up the web server from here. So that means people can route it without anything else. That's why our software, the, the routing software, is optional. Because when you take this unit as it is, in the AES standard, you can take any web-based device and do the routing. If you want to do it more sexy, you use our routing software. It's optional. And I notice you've got a couple of cards here. There's one for the Behringer X32, which gives oh, you yeah. the AES67. And that's a really beautiful, is that an SSD down there? That's an SSD. We, uh, this is one of the Angelbird SSDs out of Austria. Yeah. We work together with the guys. They make really great SSD. And this is one of the, the drives that we really recommend. I have to uh, correct you on one thing. This particular card for the, AES, for the X32 is a recording card. Ah. So it's not an AES67 networking card, it's just recording. And we use the networking to remote control the, the recorder. So, for instance, if you go to our iPad here, and I'm hoping that I can switch it here. We're now looking for the U-Track. There it is. And here, I now can start a recording for the U-Track, and there it goes, it's recording now. So it's it's the output, so the audio is rooted inside the mixer to the exactly. output. Exactly, it doesn't so. even leave the mixer. We take audio directly from the rails in the mixer and put it on the on the USB stick. That's funny because they've been promising a multi-track recording card themselves for such a long time. You beat them to it, well done sir. Thank you. So, um, I mean, this stuff is, it's starting to be kind of, you see it everywhere because as we know, everybody wants small footprint, cheap cabling costs, all of those exactly. things. Yeah. Exactly. What, what happens though, because obviously it's a bit like the VHS Betamax kind of wars because you've chosen this format. Is there any way that you can translate between them if you've already yes. committed? Well, the good thing is that in 2013, or actually years before, the AES already recognized that the different standards needed an interoperability standard and that's the reason why they chose to found the X192 study group and this group basically came up with the AEX67 interoperability standard and that is now supported by I believe 22 different companies including Dante, QSIS, uh, Ravenna, they all support basically AES67 so we have this RTF format for audio here you may have word, he has word perfect, and if we both exchange RTF formats, we can read each other's content. Uh, like, yeah, like rich text. So yeah, uh, that's exactly what it is. So is it is it is that translation done in the control, or do you need kind of bridging hardware? How is it done generally? What do you exactly mean? With well, if I have a cable which is in one format, and I want to plug it into the other one, does it? Do I have to tell one network to expect something else? If you see what I mean. Between yes. Two, yeah. How it would work? is for instance if you are in a, the proprietary networks like for instance an, an RDA Dante network they could publish a stream in AES67 format like you would save a file in an RTF format and then one of my units could subscribe to that stream and it would also work the other way around if we send the stream into a proprietary network they can subscribe to my AS67. Stream. So it, it's a bit, it's, it's kind of like, a, it's almost like streaming audio, where you RTMP, that kind of stuff. It yeah. literally is, but it's it's one step further than that because it's time aligned. It's there's a lot of extra stuff going on, but yeah, in simple words, that's how it works. And how, what sort of capacity can the network have? <laughs> Anything. 
if you go to standard 100 Mbit networks, theoretically, you can move somewhere between 30 to 40 channels on 100 Mbit. But that, of course, depends on the overhead that's on the network. So if you multiply that by 10 on a gigabit, that literally, or even on a gigabit, you can move a couple of hundred channels back and forth without a problem. So if you go, for instance, to the, if you, if you saw the ProLite sound, there are the big guys, the big mixers doing 256 channels on gigabit. No problem. And gigabit is what you buy in every, uh, in every electronics store nowadays. Yeah. And is all this stuff available now or is it coming soon? This is coming soon, this summer. So the M42 is going to be this summer. Yeah. What the, sort of price is that going to be? Do you know? Have you fixed We them? are estimating somewhere around 499 in euros. That's our estimated price. Utrecht is there, X32 is there, the LPLR is there. And of course, for the Utrecht, we now also have the additional cards to connect it to ADAT, to MADI, and of course the network card. And that's available in the next two months. So, all there. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much.